and welcome to this second episode of my mini series dedicated to the rework of the strip uh, for my DIY remote control project. In the first video we have seen uh, in fact the new strip on the breadboard uh, and we have uh, highlighted what are the new elements uh, and uh, evolution that I did on the strip. In this uh, second video we, we will go a little bit more into details, into technical details. We will be seeing uh, the schematics first of all. We will be seeing some configuration in the Cube uh, uh, IDX, in the Cube uh, MX. Uh, and we will be checking out the PCB. We will also at the end see some rendering of the uh, uh, PCB uh, that will arrive uh, uh, soon from uh, PCBWare. Before to start, as always, I would like to kindly ask you to subscribe to the channel to give a thumbs up to the video and to hit the bell uh, in order to stay tuned. Uh, good that I mentioned PCB Way because uh, as for the first video, also this second one is sponsored by PCB Way. Uh, PCB Way is one of the larger manufacturers of PCB and not only uh, uh, in the world. Uh, as if you go to the sites in these days, you will see that they are celebrating their 10th anniversary and you will find a lot of interesting stuff on the site uh, going from coupons and uh, uh, initiative which I think you will find very interesting. Thank you very much to PCB Way for sponsoring uh, this uh, uh, mini series of the new strip. Let's move back uh, to our uh, schematics. So, first of all, uh, here you can see the STM32F072 which is the microcontroller that I'm using uh, inside each uh, channel. Uh, uh, first change as I was mentioned in the first video, I have left only the uh, heartbeat and power LEDs. All the other LEDs which were connected here has been uh, uh, eliminated. Uh, instead here you can see part of the connectivity for the new display. The new display is SPI so it requires all the elements of the SPI protocol and in fact here you can see uh, the reset line you can see here the uh, data command line, you can see the chip select line and here you can see clock and MOSI, my um, master output slave input. Um, of course we don't have a MISO, so master input slave output because as I was mentioning uh, uh, the data are sent only from the microcontroller to the display and not in the other way around. Here you can see the third important change that I did on the, on the strip. Uh, as I was mentioned in the first video, originally the number of the, uh, of the channel was set in software, which was not very handy because uh, it was requiring to, uh, to uh, upload a different configuration of the software in each channel. So I've moved this on an hardware side and through these three lines now it's possible to uh, 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 so let's see it here. It's possible to uh, connect to 3.3 uh, volts the line and the, determine if the number is uh, 0, 1, 2, 3, uh, 4, 5, 6, 7. Always keep in mind that the counting is zero based, so it's uh, channel 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Let's go maybe more into details of this part. This is the CubeMX uh, configuration uh, for my project. Here you can see the three channels that I was mentioning. As you can see, all the three channels are in input mode, but are set with the put down resistor. So they are connected to ground, meaning that as default they are zero. When I connect them to 3.3 volts, uh, the line goes up, so they, they are one, and in this way I can determine the number of the channel can see it here better maybe in the uh, in the software so here we have three variable boolean uh, in which I'm catching the value of the input uh, that can be of course 0 or 1 and then here I'm filling this 8-bit uh, uh, variable channel n uh, with the bit shift operation so I can put in the first bit the value of the uh, first uh, uh, input in the second, uh, shifting one, the value of the second, and in the third, shifting two, the value of the uh, uh, of the third uh, line. Then moving to the PCB, uh, uh, here you can see all the components. 
the pads and the tracks and vias. Uh, there is not the ground plane because otherwise it's a little bit complicated to read it. So let's go more into the details here of the three channel uh, connectivity. As you can see, uh, we have two, three pairs of connectors, of pin headers to be precise. If we check on the back layer, there you go. We still have the three pairs here. Here are connected to the MCU and here are connected to 3.3 volts. It's very visible if we go like this. And here we have the legenda. So basically when the three connectors are not connected, the three pairs, sorry, of pin headers are not connected each other, this is channel one because the value is zero. When the first one is connected, it's channel one and so on and so forth until the three all connected and channel eight. Then moving to the display, there you go. The display is is here it's nine uh, 0 0.96 inch uh, display here you can see the 13 pins uh, connectivity of the display uh, here you can see the transistor uh, the uh, needed uh, uh, resistor and the here you can see the uh, um, decoupling capacitor this is uh, uh, the pin header that, has, that is needed in order to connect or not directly to ground and so decide if or not to use the PWM to dim at the background light. Let's check out the diagram uh, for this. I think it's gonna be more clear. This is the 13 pin connectivity. These are uh, the SPI uh, lines. This is the 3.3 volt connected to the uh, uh, LED anode. And what is interesting here is what the, connect uh, the circuits of the LED cathodes. As you can see, the cathode is going through this 10 ohm resistor and it can go directly to ground if this pin header is connected. We've seen it uh, one, one second ago. Or otherwise, if this circuit, this part of the circuit is open, it goes ground, but through this uh, uh, S8050 NPN uh, um, transistor. Uh, the base of the transistor is connected uh, to the uh, display BLK, which is nothing uh, uh, other than the, uh, uh, the PWM coming from the uh, MCU. Finally, let's check the 3D rendering of the PCB. There you go. First of all, here we can see the display. Let's check the circuit that I was mentioning. Maybe this is more visible. There you go. This is the 13 pin connectivity. This is the header that I can connect or not, or bypass. This is the transistor. These are the uh, uh, resistor and this is the coupling capacitor. Same here. Let's turn it like this. Sorry. There you go. So that's it. Let's wait for uh, the PCB to arrive from uh, PCB way, and then we will check first of all if they are working, and second if they are fulfilling the goal for which I have reworked them. Thank you very much for your attention, and thanks a lot to PCB way for sponsoring this series. See you.